But now go to chapter 6, because I want to show you something. 5, 6, 7. Chapter 5, now we're in chapter 6, chapter 7. So we would say we're in the middle of his talk of three chapters. We're in the middle. In Matthew 6, Jesus expresses some expectations, assumptions, or desires he has of his disciples, not commands. That's the second point I want you to think about in your mind. First of all, who's he talking to? His disciples. In chapter 6, he gives them a series of assumptions. He assumed they were doing these things. Expectations. He would expect that they were doing it. He didn't tell them to do it. He just expected they were doing them. Desires. As his disciples, he just, I mean, he says, this is what you'd be doing, right? You're already doing that, aren't you? He isn't belittling them. He isn't cajoling them. He's not forcing something on them. He's just saying, now, you're doing this, aren't you? Kind of like the piano teacher saying, you warm up for 15, 20 minutes, don't you, doing that? to get your coordination. Jesus, now, now watch how he does it. Notice Jesus never commands these disciples to choose to do these disciplines. He doesn't say, I command you to do this. He just states them as assumptions that they would already be doing this. In other words, Jesus said, this is what I expect you are already doing as my disciples. Now, what are the expectations? Well, there are three of them. Jesus assumed three things, and, and I'm gonna just run through chapter 6 with you real quickly, he assumed that they would be giving to the poor, he assumed that they would be praying, and he assumed that they would be fasting. And, and watch this as you read. Praying. Now Notice. go down to verse 16. In Matthew 6, verse 16, down through 18, Jesus assumes a third spiritual discipline of his disciples, which is fascinating to me. That, that I think praying we've got, giving to the poor is in the periphery, and fasting is out of sight. You know, but not with Jesus. It's a, it's a tight package that's right in the heart. He knew that they'd probably be waning at the end of his sermon. He knew they might be fiddling at the beginning, so he saves this for the middle when they've tuned in finally. You know, they're sitting, and it's comfortable, and they're listening. And look what it says in verse 16. Jesus said it is his expectation that any disciple of his would be concerned and engaged in some form of fasting. And he says it repeatedly. Verse 16, moreover, when you fast. Not if, not you must. When? When? He's assuming that they already are. When you fast, don't be like the hypocrites with sad countenance. They disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, that's the only reward they get. Verse 17, but you, when you fast, you are fasting, aren't you? I mean, can you imagine the power this is having on, on the disciples as they're hearing this? Anoint your head, wash your face, so that you do not appear by, uh, to men to be fasting, but to your father who is in the secret place, and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. By the way, Bible study question, verse 18. What's the context of the reward in verse 18? What is God rewarding for? What's the context? What's mentioned four times in verses 16 and 17 and 18? Fasting. God has a special reward he gives those who give compassionately to the poor. God has a special reward. He collects the prayers of those that pray to him. God has a special reward. Look at verse 18. Your father who sees this secret fasting, who you don't even appear to be fasting. In fact, you're, you're all scrubbed up and look cheerful and, and well-fed and happy. The father who sees you in secret will reward you openly, probably again. Lord will connect the dots uh, because he said that the key things in the ministry of his church are accompanied by prayer that is surrounded with fasting and he will show what happened because of that that maybe we never know in this life.